Hello everyone, this is Lysander Xanthus, and this is the Full Moon in Taurus Candle Ritual. We are actually going to do something a little different today. Um, I was inspired to do things differently, and also I don't have uh, uh, a fireplace to be burning things in anymore. So uh, This is my fiancé, the Kitchen Witch. Tis I, the Kitchen Witch. <laughs> I'm going to go share the video and I'll be right back. Alright, so... I'm going to wait a few moments for while some folks join me, uh, but we are going to begin very shortly. So um, I will show you the altar real quick. There it is. Um, right. So. trying to think of where for best to put this. Hello everyone. So here is the full moon altar for tonight. Um, we are going to be beginning by clearing the space with the singing bowl. So that will produce a high-pitched sound just so you know. Um, we have a little incense burning, and uh, we have the Fortuna statue and our manifestation candle right there, uh, selenite, and a quartz with black tourmaline in it. Not sure how these are going to come into place, just inspired to place them there. So, the full moon in Taurus. Uh, as usual, for the full moon, we are going to be focusing our intent on manifestation and things that we would like to bring to fruition. And uh, this full moon is in Taurus, so my feeling is that this full moon is particularly well suited to setting intentions for manifestations surrounding physical, material, monetary intentions. Alrighty, so I'm going to turn us back around. We are in the house, as most of you know. So I'm going to begin by clearing the space and the sound shall hopefully do the same. So this is my method for clearing our energies. So we're going to start with the singing bowl. Okay. So we're going to clear ourselves in the air first.
night. So I hope everyone's doing well. It's just to kind of clear the air a bit before setting our intentions. I feel that it's always good to kind of clear a space when we're asking for something new to come into our lives. Um, something else that's different that we are doing this evening are some guidance cards drawn by my beloved. <laughs> so uh, we are going to do that next. Um, while we do the guidance cards, what I would like you to think about and perhaps write down on a sheet of paper just so that it's clear and in front of you is uh, your own list of things that you would like to manifest or things that you've already been working on that you'd like to see come to fruition and to have that clearly in your mind. That's partially why I suggest doing a list in case you have a lot of things so you don't have to think too, too hard about it. And we're going to get to that list in just a little bit. So pull that together for yourself. So remember, things you want to manifest or to invite into your life, uh, things you want to come to fruition, it could be anything. It could be a quality, a trait, a habit, a physical thing, a, a type of person, love, material things, health, anything. Um, however, it is worth noting that the energy of this moon in particular is especially well suited to monetary and material intentions, especially things uh, pertaining to comfort and stability. But you can intend about anything. Are you ready? Yeah. Shall we watch you draw the cards, or do you wanna? No, oh, I figured you. All right. I'm gonna turn the camera like around. Right there. Just a moment. So this is the kitchen witch. She's going to be drawing some cards for the full moon in Taurus. Hello, everybody. I hope you are all well. I'm going to take a minute to draw three cards from three different decks um, because there are so many of you watching. I'm going to ask the stars to give me three different versions of their message to all of you. That way, hopefully, each reading will be able to reach each of you differently or perhaps one will fit more than another but it's generally channeling the stars and seeing what their messages are at this time. This first deck is one of my favorites. It's called The Universe Has Your Back. It's a fantastic deck for a straightforward, meditative or affirmative kind of reading. So it's these three. Hopefully you can all see those clearly. I'm gonna look at one card at a time. Why don't you read them aloud, dear? I let go of the shadow of the past by seeing someone for the first time with the eyes of love. True healing occurs when I give myself permission to feel whatever feelings live below the triggers. The key to prayer is to forget what I think I need. I'm going to show you the cards one more time. It's 
I love that about this deck. It always seems to give me cards that correlate to a single idea. These are all cards of healing. All right. So that is the first message. So cards of healing for those of you who need to be healed. The second deck is the Psychic Tarot. And it's one of my favorites and one of my older decks. I've had this one for... My age is showing. Uh, 12 years. If I may say so, this is actually the deck that I learned to read on for the very first time. So this is where my divination journey began. Same deck that she's holding. That was seven years ago. <laughs> Positive movement forward, passion ignited, and intuition. So oracle cards, so there's a guidebook. Shall I read the whole entry? Mm -hmm. oh. I have to stay attuned, it'll be hard for me to All right, so do both. This, I'm going to read the description for each card one at a time. Positive movement forward. So all of or just parts of what I say about each card may be relevant to you. You are a true artisan, for you have the crafts, skills, knowledge, gifts, and talents to assist you even more to advance in a positive direction. The number eight always denotes prosperity and abundance, but in this case, it's your efforts that have gotten you to this point. Good for you. This card often comes comes forth to honor and recognize individuals who are in the fields of art, design, music, and education. When you follow and build on your passion, the soul can truly express itself and can then assist you to move closer toward your highest good. An opportunity could suddenly come up with an offer for an apprenticeship. Notice if there are areas of passion that are trying to manifest into your world. When they arise, you'll have ample moments to share them with others. Um, and of course, the title is apt, Positive Movement Forward. So if that's all you remember, that's what it means. The brilliant thing is that that card speaks of passion. And the second card is Passion Ignited. Just looking for that tree. The first of the spirit cards signifies that this is the time to let your soul soar. New beginnings, ideas, revelations, and exciting adventures await you in your personal or business life. Creative endeavors, enthusiasm, positive energy, and a renewed spiritual strength are at an all-time high. The powerful force of spirit is flowing through you, and with it comes a new sense of purpose. Be all that you can be, reach inside, and tap into that force. Use it to move forward and set up a strong foundation for the future. Other people may feel your excitement and joy and begin to benefit from the spark of life that's emanating from you. They'll wonder, what's your secret? And your energy could even ignite their own spiritual journey. Follow your intuition, but know that this is your time to spread your wings and fly. Uh, and again, the title, Passion Ignited, is just stating the beginning of a new desire and direction. Third card is intuition. 
Intuition is the language of the soul. When this card shows up in a reading, it's a clear message that it's time for you to use your intuition. Just give it a chance and you'll quickly notice how it might be trying to get your attention. With so much information in this world vying for your every thought, it's easy to ignore or fail to acknowledge your insights. Synchronicities and so-called coincidences are powerful signs that intuition is knocking on your door. Have you heard a phrase or saying repeated by more than one person today? Do the same numbers keep showing up in your life? Has someone mentioned the name of a specific individual whom you are just thinking of? These are all signals for you to pause, be open, and pay attention. This is a perfect time to seek the answers from within. Turn inward where you'll find the solutions and val valuable insights that are waiting to assist you. When you learn to use and trust your intuition, you'll begin to have a sense of not only the right timing, but you'll also begin to perceive people and situations with a deeper and more discerning eye. You'll not only observe beneath and beyond what's actually in front of you, you'll see the real deal. Alrighty, so those are these three cards. Now, she's... I went ahead and drew for the third deck. This is a very old deck. It's been out of print for a long time, and it is the Olympic Tarot. And it's tales and fables and stories about the gods and kings of ancient Greece. And this deck is incredibly cryptic and difficult to interpret. So I went ahead and drew the cards so that I had a moment to reflect on their meaning. So there are three cards. The first is the Eight of Chalices. And the story here is the walls of Troy and the men who had fallen before the war horse was built. And the card represents nightmares coming to fruition but it is followed very closely by the Nine of Pentacles, which is the legend of Hercules and the way that he conquered the Nemean lion. It represents conquering or overcoming great obstacles. In this case, it would be overcoming one's fears or nightmares. The final card is the Six of Chalices, which is the Lion's Gate where Agamemnon walked triumphantly from the battlefield to his kingdom for the first time and it represents victory so by choosing to conquer your fears you can attain victory is what i would interpret these cards to me awesome so similar messages three different ways mm -hmm. I think the messages are all the same, really. They all talk about overcoming fears and obstacles, finding the ability to find strength or the ability to conquer or the healing within us and that goal of greater intuition or greater prayer or greater victory in each of them. Hopefully, interpreting that message in three different ways will allow each and every one of you to connect personally to one of those methods. So there it is. And if you need to see it again, this video will be available for replay if you didn't catch it the first time. Alrighty, thank you, my dear. Mm -hmm. We don't see, uh, I tend to read clairvoyantly, so we don't see the cards a, a lot, but I do love them. All right, we're gonna turn back around. Hello again. Now that we have done all that, it is time to move to the altar, I think. So let us get all comfortable next to it. So be sure you get into a position to see yourself comfortably. And I hope that you took your time to think about what it was you want to set your intentions upon this evening. Ah, yes. Good eye, Carla. Repeating eight on the ca cards in numerology, eight is a prosperous number. And that's what we're here for tonight under Taurus. Can you hand me my pumpkin? Yes, I can. There's moon. So, Here's moon, everybody. Okay. 
Uh, I'm gonna be sitting with it in my lap while I hold my intentions. Kind of, uh, I will talk about using pumpkin and prosperity spells another time. So, uh, we are sitting here next to the altar, so I hope you'll scoot up with us. And I'm gonna turn this around so you guys are looking at the altar. Do you like to hold this? Would it be easier? Or. Because um, we'll be directing everyone. Okay, sure. So, this is our setup. I kind of talked a bit about it before, but uh, this is my wealth altar, and the top of it looks like the full moon, so I feel like it's a very appropriate place to do a working tonight. I'm actually going to light our manifestation candle. I didn't want to light it too soon. This candle is infused with various oils that, let's see if it wants to participate, that to kind of increase the intention. The wick fell down a little bit. Once the wax gets going, I'm sure it will rise up. All right, so we're going to start with a little incense. This is a good fortune incense. Just going to spread it around here. This is a statue of the goddess Fortuna. Send you a little the incense as well. Set the stick down here. All right. So now I would like you to focus on the flame of this candle right here. And what you're going to do is you're going to think of your intention or manifestation and you're going to project that intent into the flame of this candle. Um, you can just push the energy into that flame or you can imagine it being a small object that you are burning in the flame and imagine it burning all the way and being transformed in the into in the fire and being released so that it can seek form. So we're going to sit in silence for a time while we focus on the candle.
excuse me just a moment I'm gonna try to tip some of this out there we go sometimes there's just too much wax there we'll continue remind us what we're doing so again uh, you will be focusing on the flame of this candle and you are going to project your intentions into the flame. So your intentions for this moon, you're going to hold that intention in your mind, the thing that you want while looking at this flame and imagine putting it into the fire. You can imagine your thought or desires of the object that you set into the flame. Uh, the idea is to allow that wish to be empowered and transformed by the fire so that it can come into being. part of the visualization is to, uh, regardless of if you're inside or outside, imagine the full moon above yourself and imagine the moonlight pouring down on you and I would like you to breathe that moonlight into yourself. And uh, because you're putting this intention out under the moon's energy, imagine that breathing in the moonlight is kind of your way of accepting what you've asked for and taking it in and taking in it, the moon's power to manifest and to pull things out of the potential. So we're going to take a moment to visualize that now. affirmation you can repeat to yourself or just think to yourself is I deserve insert your intention and I accept it now while you do this
the next visualization, the next and last visualization we're going to do is going to be with the goddess Fortuna. Um, and it is similar to what we just did with the moon. As you can see in this image, she is freely giving out gold coins. She doesn't, there are no criteria for who receives blessing from her. It is available to all. All you have to do is to reach out your hands and accept it. So I would like you to focus on the statue and the idea of an all giving source of abundance and to imagine that she that uh, it freely comes from her, from her hands the thing that you desire and to see it see yourself accepting it and take it in, into your hands and to breathe that in and to take it from her and to accept it from her and when you feel ready, draw your hands to your chest to really bring it into yourself and to accept what it is you've asked for. So we're going to take a few moments to do that now. Do you think we'd be able to see her better if the light was off? Mm-mm. If you haven't already done so, draw your hands to your chest as you breathe in, taking abundance that is freely given. This concludes our full moon meditation ritual. I hope that you have found it helpful. We welcome hearing from you in the comments, your experience with this meditation, um, whether you have something to say now or over the next week. Um, so we really appreciate you joining us and we hope to see you again for the new moon ritual in two weeks. Do you have anything you'd like to add? No, I'm doing good. <laughs> I'd like to add kitty abundance. All the kitty abundance. Oh, that's the baby. Well, thank you everyone for joining us. Have a blessed evening. Blessed be. Be blessed. <laughs>